Hi everyone. One of my favourite stories about Kropotkin is when Goldman and Kropotkin had an extended argument about sex and sexual emancipation and the extent to which it should be focused on within the anarchist movement. The account of this story is from Emma Goldman's autobiography, Living My Life, which I highly recommend you read. The account goes as follows. We discussed America, our movement there, and conditions in England. Peter had visited the States in 1898, but I was at the time on the coast and unable to attend his lectures. I knew, however, that his tour had been very successful, and that he had left a most gratifying impression. The proceeds of his meeting had helped to revive solidarity and inject new life into our movement. Peter was particularly interested in my tours through the Middle West and California. It must be a splendid field, he remarked, if you can cover the same ground three times in succession. I assured him that it was, and that much of the credit for my success in California had been due to free society. The paper is doing splendid work, he warmly agreed, but it would do more if it would not waste so much space discussing sex. I disagreed, and we became involved in a heated argument about the place of the sex problem in anarchist propaganda. Peter's view was that women's equality with man had nothing to do with sex, it was a matter of brains. When she is his equal intellectually, and shares in his social ideals, he said, she will be as free as he. We both got somewhat excited, and our voices must have sounded as if we were quarrelling. Sophia, quietly sewing a dress for her daughter, tried several times to direct our talk into less vociferous channels, but in vain. Peter and I paced the room in growing agitation, each strenuously upholding his side of the question. At last, I paused with the remark, All right, dear comrade, when I have reached your age, the sex question may no longer be of importance to me, but it is now, and it is a tremendous factor for thousands, millions even, of young people. Peter stopped short, an amused smile lighting up his kindly face. Fancy, I didn't think of that, he replied. Perhaps you are right after all. He beamed affectionately upon me with a humorous twinkle in his eye. The reason why I like this story so much is not only that Emma Goldman claims to have won an argument against Kropotkin, who was a very uh, argumentative person, but also that Kropotkin lost the argument because Emma Goldman reminded him that young people are extremely horny and Kropotkin responded, according to Goldman's account, by not only saying that perhaps she was right, but also doing so with a humorous twinkle in his eye, which perhaps suggests that he was reminiscing about when he was young, and much more sex-obsessed than he was when he was a very old man. Although, in his autobiography, Memoirs of a Revolutionist, Kropotkin doesn't really talk about his sex life at all, Instead, he overwhelmingly focuses on his childhood and his family, his career as a geographer, and how he became an anarchist and revolutionary, despite growing up in the Russian aristocracy and being prepared for a career in the Russian military or civil service. Emma Goldman, in comparison, spends a huge amount of her autobiography living my life talking about her different sexual relationships, how her boyfriends treated her, how they made her feel, how they met and how they broke up, what sex was like with them, and so on. And I find it really interesting because this is an aspect of the life of revolutionaries that often is hard to learn about, because a lot of the sources that are available will tend to focus on things like their participation in the movement, how they joined the movement, what life was like for them in prison, and things like that. But you tend not to learn a huge amount about their uh, sex life and their different relationships in, in any detail beyond, say, 
this person dated this person. Um, you tend not to learn anything about the details. While in Emma Goldman's autobiography, you learn a huge amount about the details. And I think this is really interesting because I often don't really relate to the experiences of famous revolutionaries when I learn about their lives because I haven't done anything like what they did. I haven't participated in any revolutions or loads of direct action. I've never been imprisoned. I've never experienced the kinds of state repression that they experienced. But I have been in different relationships, and so I found it very cathartic to read about Emma Goldman's different relationships and relating to them and reflecting on them. And I think that's pretty neat. Um, this isn't to say that Emma Goldman's autobiography is just her talking about her love life. She also talks about loads of other things like her childhood, what her dad was like, uh, he was extremely abusive, how she joined the anarchist movement due to learning about the Haymarket Martyrs, propaganda of the deed, different attempts to get Alexander Berkman out of prison after he unsuccessfully tried to assassinate a capitalist. She talks about her various visits to Europe, and she talks about opposition to World War I, um, all her different experiences in prison. And so it's a very interesting first-person perspective on the anarchist movement by someone who played a key role within it. So I really recommend uh, reading it. It's a very interesting primary source. I will leave a link to the book in the description. If you like this video, please follow me on Twitter and support me on Patreon. Have a nice day, everyone. Goodbye.